Gerald Levert followed in his dad Eddie's footsteps to become an international superstar. As a member of Levert and LSG, Gerald was responsible for some of our favorite baby-making, boot-knocking music. We've discussed most of Gerald's career in our Levert video, so be sure to check that out. We also sparked a huge debate on TikTok when we posted a video about one of Gerald's romantic relationships. After the video received over 100,000 views and several people questioned the contents of the video, we decided to dig deeper into Gerald's love life. We found out that creating timeless hits isn't the only thing Gerald was good at. He was a real-life Casanova. Before his untimely passing, Gerald was linked to several women. They said Gerald loved the ladies. Oh, he was a ladies' man. We know that. Well, I don't know who that love ladies. Now, we don't have all day to sit here and talk about every woman Gerald was knocking down, and we're definitely not going to get into rumors about him allegedly being responsible for a certain gospel singer's divorce. So if we fail to mention the brief romance he had with your auntie's cousin's neighbor's best friend back in 1984, just keep in mind that we're under time constraints and we'll only be discussing his significant and publicized relationships. And you know what? I don't know who these heifers are talking to Gerald, but I'm a cuddle. I will cut that heifer. I will cut that. I will snatch every braid out. But before we get into all the twists and turns of his love life, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of turkey, beef and bacon jerky, buffalo wing popcorn, and butter toffee peanuts. In the memoir he co-wrote with his dad, which we've linked for you in the description box, Gerald describes his perfect woman. He liked a woman that kept her nails done, hair done, everything did and someone who kept themselves in shape because it showed that she respected herself. As for his favorite body part, Gerald wrote that he loved him some lips. He added, they're great for kissing, licking, biting, and sucking. Talking before, during, and after making love is great too. He loved bubble baths and showers for two, lights on or lights off. Music playing in the background was okay as long as it wasn't one of his dad's songs. And the most romantic thing a woman could ask him was, are you okay? Because it showed that she really cared about him. Gerald and Kim Whitley met during childhood since they grew up in the same neighborhood in Shaker Heights, Ohio. Though they were friends most of the time, they eventually started dating, and Kim described him as her first true love. According to Kim, she was the inspiration behind Levert's 1988 song, Addicted to You. As they got closer, her mom and dad told her she wasn't allowed to date a musician, but Kim ignored them and followed her heart. Gerald permitted her to go to Hollywood to pursue her dream of becoming an actress and comedian, but he told her if she wanted to be with him, there could only be one star in their relationship. Gerald expected his woman to be a homemaker, just like his mom was. And so he and Kim broke up several times and were on again, off again, but they remained close friends. I'm going to cut him. I don't care about the party. She in his face. They're a little too close to him. Excuse me. I don't try to be rude. But you, but you, no, no, no. I don't want to take no pictures, but you need to back up. You in his personal space. Y'all back up. Y'all too close to him. According to Kim, years down the road, Monique wanted to shoot her shot at Gerald, and she asked Kim for her blessing. And Kim agreed. He would always tell the story about how he got drunk at your house one night, and you locked the gates and wouldn't let him leave or something like that. <laughs> And, and so whatever was happening with Monique and Gerald didn't work out either, but they also remained friends. Kim told TV One that she and Gerald made a pact that if they both weren't married by the time they turned 50, they'd marry each other. With Kim being five years older, we're not sure if they were waiting until he turned 50 or until she turned 50. But sadly, Gerald didn't make it to see his 50th birthday. Now, let's go back to the mid to late 80s when Gerald met R&B singer Mickey Howard. Mickey told our friend Storm Monroe that Gerald was cute and nice. He came from a family of Jehovah's Witnesses, and Mickey was studying to be a Jehovah's Witness as well, so they bonded over their faith. Their romantic relationship started first, and then they started making music together, including the 1987 song, That's What Love Is. Best friends that turned into lovers. Okay. That's oh, yeah. natural. We wrote songs together. I mean, we, ah, we just lovers first. 
then you turn into good friends. We turn into like good work, 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 husband and wife, you know. Mickey was all about Gerald, but there were too many people in his ear telling him to leave her alone. During Gerald's Unsung episode, Mickey said some people had a problem with her being a mother of two, and they begged Gerald not to marry her. Eventually, Gerald also started making comments to her such as, I don't want a ready-made family. In the made-for-TV movie titled Love Under New Management, which is based on Mickey's life story, a scene depicts Mickey uncovering Gerald's stash of prescription pills. When he's asked about the medication, he explains what each one is for and tells Mickey there's nothing to worry about. In the next scene, Mickey wakes up in the middle of the night and finds Gerald passed out on the bathroom floor. Thankfully, she was able to wake him up. Later on, she calls his mom to let her know about the bathroom incident, and when Gerald overhears the phone call, he goes ham. According to Mickey's version of events, they broke up shortly after that incident. Mickey told Soul Express website, less than two months after their breakup, Mickey married someone else. However, it doesn't appear that the marriage was a happy and successful one. She and Gerald reconnected to record another duet for her third album. And according to Soul Express website, Mickey was pregnant by someone else during the recording process. She and Gerald stayed in each other's lives. Mickey also confirmed what Kim previously spilled, that Gerald wanted a woman who would stay at home. Mickey said he wanted to be with someone who was like his mom, and he encouraged Mickey to be a traditional woman rather than a woman of the world. So while he and Kim were still in contact and he and Mickey had whatever going on, Gerald was out and about and gyrating on and off the stage. Everyone was in love with Gerald, who was affectionately known as Teddy Bear. It wasn't uncommon for the stage to be littered with granny panties during his performances. In 1990, he fathered two children with two women, a daughter named Carlicia and a son named Lamica. The children were born three days apart, and as you can expect, there was a whole lot of what Gerald described as baby mama drama. Kim was still as supportive as ever, especially when he would call to vent about his children's mothers and his girlfriends. In an episode of her podcast, Kim stated Gerald even got engaged at one point, and he would always call Kim to complain about his fiance. Unfortunately, we can't confirm his fiance's identity. And, of course, Mickey wasn't too far away either. She told Storm Monroe that they would see each other whenever either one of them was in town. She also implied that their situationship was on a don't-ask-don't-tell basis. Her kids and his kids would all hang out together and have a good time. Mickey also fell in love with the mothers of his children. I love all of the mothers of his children. Uh, he picked some really fine women that are strong, integrity, and really nice women that uh, I love from, I do. Gerald continued falling for temptation on and off the road and fathered his third child, Cameron, in 1998. Now let's fast forward to 2002. Gerald released his album, The G-Spot, and the music video for his song, Funny, included Corinne Steffens as his love interest. Now, many of you know how Corinne got the nickname Superhead. However, we're unsure if she and Gerald had a little something something going on during the time of the video shoot. In February 2003, Gerald met singer and songwriter Candy Burris of Escape. Aside from her busy career, Candy was also raising her daughter, Riley, who was six months old at the time. Candy and Gerald had a very close and deep relationship. The same year they met, they even co-wrote a song together called It's You. In the lyrics, they reveal the dynamics of their relationship. In her verse, Candy sings about loving his stank, cocky attitude. She also describes how she admires the way he shows love to her child. In his iconic, powerful, and soulful voice, Gerald sings about how Candy isn't affected by his baby mama drama because she has her own drama going on. He also sings, it's you, the way your mama treat me like her own, the way you came and made my house a home. I love everything about you. The song didn't make the cut for whichever project they were working on, and it collected dust for decades. Sources claim Candy and Gerald's relationship lasted for two years. So why did things end? 
Our friends over at Straight From The A reported that the couple broke up because they couldn't see eye to eye. We already know that Gerald wanted a woman who would stay at home and take care of the kids. And we know that Candy is about her business and extremely focused on her career. So it's no surprise this relationship didn't work out. After their breakup, there was no love lost and Candy remained in contact with Gerald's children and some of his extended family. In 2005, Gerald appeared on MTV's My Super Sweet 16 with his daughter, Carlicia. In his co-authored book, Gerald said the show was a big mistake. MTV made it look like he spent $2 million on the party, and his other children's mothers were upset that their children weren't receiving the same treatment. Gerald described how, because he didn't have a good relationship with all of the mothers, the relationships with his children also suffered. One of his children's mothers called his mom and said, Your son is out here doing this and that, and you don't have any control over him. And one thing Gerald couldn't stand was when people tried to drag Mama into his mess. In 2005, which was the same year he and Candy broke up, Gerald decided to put his health first by attending a fitness and weight loss program. While there, he fell and ruptured his Achilles tendon, and his leg was placed in a full-length cast. According to his unsung, Gerald had everybody and their mama on his payroll, as well as various random people he would give money to so they could pay their bills. And since there were so many people depending on him, and Gerald made most of his money on the road, he rushed through his recovery process and returned to the stage sooner than he should have. Friends and family members confirmed he was in a constant state of pain and discomfort and was taking over-the-counter and prescription medication to help him fall asleep. It was during this period of his life that things started to change for him. He was recognizing the mistakes he made, and he was ready for deeper and more meaningful connections with his loved ones. During an episode of her podcast, Kim said Gerald told her that in regards to having three children with three women, he wished he had been smarter. This same sentiment was expressed in his co-authored book. Gerald wrote that he was selfish in the past and wanted to be able to come and go as he pleased, whether it pertained to his children or the women in his life. He was so fixated on money that if people weren't talking to him about making cash, he wasn't trying to listen to anything they had to say. But while writing the book, he realized life isn't all about money. It's about being there for your children and your family. He saw how two of his siblings were happily married, and he wanted the same for himself. Looking back on his life, Gerald said he wished he would have waited until marriage to have intimate relationships. He was most upset about his children being spread across the United States and how their mothers would uproot them and allow other men into their lives. He wrote, I get mad and wish there was a law. A woman shouldn't be able to just take the kids away from their father. In November 2006, Eddie and Gerald traveled to South Africa to perform. Eddie told AP News that while there, Gerald was bitten by something on his back, and he sought medical attention. Once they made it back to the U.S., it was cold, but Gerald was sweating profusely. He went to the doctor and was prescribed some medicine and was sent back home. A few nights later, on November 10, 2006, Gerald was found unresponsive in his bed. He was rushed to the hospital, where he was pronounced deceased at the age of 40. The cause of his passing was determined to be an accidental overdose of prescription and over-the-counter medicine. In their co-authored book, Eddie said he felt terrible that his son passed away without having a woman that he loved by his side. So, Candy appears to be his last serious relationship, and despite staying close with all of his exes, Gerald was unattached at the time of his passing. Candy has continued to play a role in Gerald's children's lives. She even refers to his son LaMica as one of her children. And when she moved on with Ashley A.J. Jewell, who reportedly had six children with several women, Candy kept her bond intact with the Levert family. Candy and AJ were briefly engaged, but they called things off in 2008. And then Candy suffered more heartache in October 2009 when AJ lost his life after getting into an altercation outside of a gentleman's club. Candy continues to be involved in AJ's children's lives as well. When Candy met her now husband, Todd Tucker, she was a bit worried. She told Contact Music website, When I first started dating Todd, I didn't know how welcoming he would be to the fact that I am still in my ex's children's lives. 
Thankfully, Todd has been very supportive and a great friend to all of the children. The children approve of him as well. When Gerald's ex-fling Monique was going through her situation with Netflix, both Candy and Gerald's son LaMica showed Monique some love in sweet and encouraging Instagram posts. Mickey still speaks fondly of Gerald and his children, and in 2022, Candy finally dropped the unreleased duet she and Gerald recorded 19 years prior. We've added a link to the song in our description box. Be sure to comment on the music video and let Candy know that RRG sent you. Gerald left this world too soon, and he never got the chance to fulfill his dream of having a wife. However, he left a significant impression on several women, and he gave them enough love to last a lifetime.